everyone and welcome back to another glaze kiln fire opening from the pottery corner my studio down on the south, south coast of england it's good to have you along welcome everybody um right the kiln is down to 10 degrees um, centigrade so it's cold it's ambient temperature it's actually quite cold um, in england at the moment in december uh, right so we'll carry on with now without further ado and i'll flip the um kiln uh catch now in here i have some glaze pieces that i have reglazed so i thought i'd have a little um go over reglazing because quite often if you pull things out of the kiln and you're rather disappointed with them sometimes it's worth just thinking actually a little bit more glaze or another glaze over the top of that would help it and you can do that with your work once it has been glaze fired so this jug, for example, as you can see, it's been through the glaze fire um, kiln. It's, I like the blue handle and I like the blue neck, but this original um, glaze was Amoco Cobalt with um, blue rutile over and it just wasn't quite what I wanted. I wanted it to flow a little bit more than it did. So on that basis and as obviously a piece like this takes a long time to make because it's thrown on the wheel the handles attached and then all of this decoration is put on by hand so it's quite time consuming so what i've done is i've sprayed the piece with simple um hairspray so just a little don't go mad don't wet it so that it all drips down you just need to spray it over with hairspray doesn't matter what brand but us girls we like Elnet as you know um, but anyway uh, and then I have left the hairspray to dry and then I have applied um, new glazes so on this I have put um, a thick coat of sapphire float and then I've left it to dry and talking about drying when you are reglazing so in other words your pot is no longer porous because obviously it's already had a glaze firing it takes ages for it to dry and i mean it can take overnight so don't try and rush rush the process don't try and dry it with a hair dryer it will crack and it will fall off so put it on leave it on move it aside go back to it the next day um, and then over the top of the sapphire float i've used one of our favorite glazes amico seaweed which is the green and I want the seaweed to pull, um, but as you know, seaweed is a particularly drippy glaze in the kiln. And what I didn't want to do was put it all over the body and then for the whole lot to literally fall off the bottom. So I have used it sparingly just on the top section. So that piece has been re-glazed over the top of a glazed piece. Um, and again, it will go through another glaze firing and then we'll see what we're left with. And actually sometimes, as I say, on a piece like this that you've spent a lot of time on, it comes out and you think, gosh, it's much better than it was. So that's um, a little tip for reglazing. So some of the pieces that are in the kiln have had that process. Um, and the first of those are my um, heart-shaped bowl. So this bowl was thrown on the wheel um, and I decorated it with some vinyl monstera leaves. Oh, don't crack that. Um, with some vinyl monstera leaves um, with copper oxide. And it didn't really come out terribly well. And actually, when I took it out of the glaze firing, there was a very, very small crack in the base. So it was disappointing. And it, it, again, it's another piece that I've spent some time on, altering the handles, um, these lovely heart-shaped handles. Um, so I thought, well, do you know what? nothing ventured nothing gained let's just refire it so the original glaze combination on this bowl was um true amco true celadon and copper oxide and what i've put over the top of it i've reglazed it in exactly the same way so the hairspray and then i have added a thick layer of um, amico seaweed and i've put some glass frit in the bottom to hide the crack so actually, from a piece that was not terribly um, beautiful with a crack in the bottom, I now have this beautiful bowl with um, this lovely uh, uh, reaction of the, what, the original copper with the seaweed, which has given it sort of almost like a metallic finish. Um, there was uh, ancient jasper 
um, on the rim and on the sides of the handle and again that has moved again with the seaweed that's gone over the top so the outside was fine um, which was the combination was Amoco Sky under Amoco Seaweed um, and in fact as, as I always say on reglazing on reglaze firing you get a much better drag on a glaze refiring so you can see all these lovely drips here um, and I'm just going to have to grind if you can see that where obviously it's been reglaze fired I've used a cookie under here but I didn't want to get the cookie near the corner because I knew that this seaweed would would pull a little bit more than it had on the first firing so I just need to glaze um, just to um, grind off these little nobbles um, so from a piece that wasn't particularly interesting actually now it's it's a rather beautiful piece and in fact I really like it and I like the glass I like the 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 you know the difference in the texture between the pottery and the glass so yes very nice very usable very saleable hopefully uh, right so that's that one next shelf down again there are two um, re-glazed re-fired um, bowls in here thrown bowls um, this one um, it started life let's see what it started life as what did it start life as it started life as um, sky and seaweed so oh yes and I've just noticed okay so there we are that's interesting just taking this off of the shelf and lucky for me I have used, let's pop that down, I have used a half shelf or a broken shelf to balance this on. And what I was saying just now about the seaweed flowing more on a second firing, that's exactly what's happened. And you can see that half of my pot is actually on that kiln shelf, which is a shame. But I couldn't put it on a cookie because this piece is glazed. So I was always up against it, really. And that's a real shame because actually the second time around, this bowl is much, much nicer having been reglazed, but obviously disaster. It happens to the best of us, unfortunately. So that's disappointing, but nonetheless, that's probably, there isn't really much I could have done about that. I probably could have put it on a stilt um, and then put it on the, the shelf, but it still would have run and it still would have dripped, but it might, it might have saved the dish, um, but nonetheless, that's one for the uh, one for the ridiculous pile. Right now, this next piece that I've reglazed, which she says she hopes hasn't stuck to the kiln shelf, and it hasn't. This piece I originally glazed in Mako's glowing embers. Now this is Mako glowing embers inside this vase, and um, as you can see, probably. It's flowed. I think what I'm doing wrong with this, so this is one of the Chunky's um, range of Mako glazes. So I buy them in these little pots to test because they're very expensive. And if you buy a whole pot and you don't like it, you're left with it. Um, so the first time I used it, I think it's probably too thick, but um, somebody didn't learn their lesson and put it on too thick again. So this particular piece is iron yellow with, so Amoco's iron yellow with Amoco's iron stone over the top on the back, which actually is very nice. We've got this lovely sort of dripping going on, which is lovely, actually quite a nice rich color. Um, and then I, as I say, when it came out, it was covered in pinholes. I mean, just ridiculously covered in pinholes. So I've reglazed it. And I put Amoco's Temaku, which is a brown, sort of like a chocolate brown glaze over the top, and then put Amoco's Oatmeal over the top of the Temaku. And actually, <laughs> sometimes you get a lovely result, but again, with the pooling in the middle with the uh, original glowing embers, which was already on it, it has pinholed again, just in the center where that glowing embers is really thick. But what a lovely um, reaction that we've had on the rest of this dish. If you wanted to do that on your dish, you'd never manage to do it. So actually it's rather beautiful. And what I'm going to do is I'm literally just going to put this piece back in the next glaze firing 
um, to get rid of these pinholes. So hopefully if I bring it up to temperature again, it will get rid of them. There's not a lot more that I can do with that. Um, and actually that is a piece for my husband. So, you know, hey ho, um, I can't use it the way that it is because it's not um, food safe to have pinholes in it like that. But what a beautiful reaction to the, so if you were to do glowing embers one layer, Temuku, um, Amoco's Temuku, um, a couple of layers and then a couple of layers of oatmeal, you might actually get this effect on it. So rather lovely, really pleased with that. Right, now the rest of the things that are in this kiln, if you watch my videos regularly, you will know that my lovely Jo, sadly, we lost her a couple of weeks ago um, and she had some biscuit work. So um, Karen and I, the other student in her session, glazed her pieces for her and her husband's coming today to pick them up. So um, this is the first one of those. So this is textured with a rubber paint roller. So Jo um, was very into texture as I am and as Karen is. Um, and she bought this rubber, it's about that long, you know, a normal paint roller size with this pattern on it, which is absolutely gorgeous. So she's made some plates using the Huntley and Noble former. This is the chamfered edge one. Um, and just rolled the texture in from the roller. And I have glazed that in Amoco Fog because um, I love the way that the Celadon glazes pool in the texture. So you get, you get almost like the picture drawn for you by the glaze. So that's really rather beautiful. I know it was meant for somebody for Christmas, but I'm afraid I don't know who. Uh, this one is um, Mulberry with snow under by the look of it. So that is Amoco's Mulberry over Amoco's snow. And again, this is a pastry made roller, which you've seen before, I'm sure. And, um, and again, another Huntley and Noble oval mold. So um, Joe was rather keen on purple glazes. So um, we have glazed them in, uh, in purple glazes. I'm sure that Jerry will her husband will pass them to um, the original recipients. This one is, again, this is um, Joe's absolute favourite combination. So this is Smoky Merlot with oatmeal over. So Amco's Smoky Merlot with oatmeal over, two coats of each. I've just got a little bit of kiln shelf on there that you can see, but I can get that off with the Dremel, so there's no problem with that. Um, and on the front, I've left it plain because she wanted to put some feather decals on here. So um, I'll get the feathers on there and then get, get that through midge, through the smaller kiln with the um, luster firing. So we've got a luster firing waiting. So that's what that one is. And the last one, which um, again is, um, this one I think is Mulberry on its own. So this is Amoco's Mulberry. Um, and again, another Huntley and Noble platter and using the Christmas um, reindeer um, roller. So very nice. And that mulberry is, a, um, actually that's, that is mulberry over obsidian. So to get this really bright royal purple, um, there are two coats of obsidian on the bottom and then two coats of mulberry over the top. So a lovely, beautiful purple that is if you can see if I this you know that's really deep royal purple very very nice so as I say those are the last of um, Joe's pieces that she made here um, and Jerry is bringing over some pieces for me to finish later so we'll get those done for him in memory of Joe so um, still in lockdown here um, I'm hoping to start restart the classes in January there's um, some COVID uh, restrictions and bits and pieces that we need to sort out in the studio. So I'm going to get those sorted between now and January and uh, hopefully welcome my students back um, in twos. So instead of having more than two students, 
we will have two students back in the studio as we did at, um, when we came back originally from the March lockdown. Um, do have a look at the website www.thepotterycorner.co.uk um, There's a shop on there with my work in it if you'd like to take a look. Um, in the meantime, um, as you can see, more going on. Um, nice things made with red clay. So I've been using uh, a red stoneware and I've put a underglaze on there and then use some melon transfer decals but I'll show you those on the next video so come back subscribe um, underneath and ring the bell and then you'll be notified when there's a new video to watch okay so any ideas on top tip Tuesdays or any comments please do let me know I'm very happy to uh, share any any knowledge that I have with you so subscribe and comment and let me know where you're viewing from I'm always interested so thanks for watching bye for now